Africa Eye goes undercover to expose the cruel trade in disabled beggars between Tanzania and Kenya. We show how mothers are tricked into giving up their own children. And reveal the true scale of this sickening trade. Oh my goodness. Two, three, four. So far we've counted more than 10 that have come out of this building. We go inside the traffickers' den to expose its darkest secrets. And try to help young victims escape the clutches of their captors. Oh my God. My name is Njeri Mwangi. I'm an investigative reporter from Nairobi, Kenya. For over a year, I've been investigating horrific crimes against some of our most vulnerable young people. As I travel through the streets of Nairobi, I often notice large numbers of disabled kids begging. I see just as many in other parts of town, and I'm shocked that they ended up in this situation at such a young age. The same scene is played out in towns and cities across Kenya, and every year their numbers seem to grow. The vast majority say the same thing. They've been brought over from Tanzania to beg. I soon realize that many of them are being watched. Hello. He was kind of warming up, but then he got a phone call. I think there's someone watching him and telling him what he needs to do and what he cannot do. I met dozens of beggars during my investigation. But the story of one affected me more than any other. His name is Farah. And as I was to discover, he has been enslaved by traffickers for nearly half of his young life. Okay, I'm dead. As a mother myself, I can't imagine what this family has gone through or the kind of abuses Farah has suffered during his time on the streets. Ukapatana na mama yako sayu utamwambia nini? 
Now I'm here to the the guy who came here. He was a he was a man who would pay him money. Iyo tu ndiyo maombi yangu ya kwamba siku moja tutarudi nyumbani uone mama yako. Sawa. Mm. Mimi nataka kukusaidia. Mm. I want to find out who brought Farah to Kenya and forced him to beg. One evening we follow him back to a shack in a poor neighborhood of the city, Kariobangi. I recruit an investigator to go undercover and find out who is holding Farah and how he's being treated. She quickly manages to get a job as a cleaner in the shack where it appears Farah is held captive. Armed with a secret camera, she turns up for her first day of work. Inside is a man called Zengo, who appears to be in charge. Also disabled, he can only walk using crutches. My investigator later learns that Zengo has just been released from police custody. He was arrested for handling a stolen TV, though Zengo says he is innocent. While he was in custody, two disabled kids he was keeping here seemed to have run away. But Farah, paralyzed from the waist down, was unable to escape. For 10 hours a day, he's forced to beg on some of Nairobi's busiest streets. Watched closely every step of the way by one of Zengo's men. Each evening, he's wheeled back to the shack by his minder. Mikono moja inaeza, moja inaeza jikokota. Atuwe kama ni kitu walikuwa nataka kama hiyo bagi ya pesa yu wanga kwa shingo unawanga na eza jikokota aitoe. As soon as Farah is delivered, the money he's collected is taken and handed over to Zengo. Everyone gets a cut. The minder who pushes Farah's wheelchair on the streets. Even our investigator is paid for her cleaning fees. <laughs> All except Farah, who doesn't receive a penny. Vanya nilienda kwa hii nyumba, nilikuwa nasikia vibaya, nikiona vile huyu kijana anatumiwa, kuenda kumekdo, na hakuna kitu yoyote yuru dipande yake. The same pattern repeats itself daily. On average, Farah brings in 2,000 Kenyan shillings, or 18 US dollars, each day from begging. Every last penny is taken from him and shared between Zengo's cronies. All Farah receives is a single basic meal each day. It's clear that Farah is being exploited terribly. So, my investigator waits for a chance to get him alone to find out more. Mukienda, una manas mamanka malu sin ya show. Ah, manas show. You go to me, will you show up? Hmm. Loki Gonjaka, una pelakango hospital. 
But how did Farah end up here, hundreds of miles from home, scared and at the mercy of his traffickers? My investigator discovers that Zengo tells the parents of disabled children in Tanzania that he'll send a cut of their earnings from begging back home. But that never happens. Conned by Zengo, the parents receive nothing. He has turned their kids into modern day slaves. Farah hands over 700,000 Kenya shillings, equivalent to $6,000 a year. No one knows how many disabled kids have been trafficked and enslaved like Farah, but experts say the number is growing each year. Irene Wagema runs a rescue center for disabled children and thinks the problem is getting worse. Since last year, the numbers have increased, and especially in Nairobi. And you see them, they're all over. They're so vulnerable, they're exposing them to every danger out of there. And the way they are kept, it's um, inhumane, completely inhumane, and they're really abused. Irene believes that organized criminal gangs are controlling and profiting from this trade in human lives. This child cannot cross the border by themselves. Because to bring these children in mass, then it means it's, it's a kind of a cartel. Because this is child trafficking. It's all tantamount to child trafficking. Many of the disabled beggars that I have spoken to come from the same part of Tanzania, the impoverished area around the city of Mwanza. I want to find out why so many vulnerable children from here end up on the streets of Nairobi. I'm met by Tanzanian journalist Florence Majani. She says traffickers target the region's poorest families, preying on their desperation. Most of them are living in a poor, 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 poor mm. regions. And then it comes this chance of some other people who are taking them from Tanzania to Nairobi. So they think different. They think maybe the kid it can be better there rather than here. The kid is taken off their hands. Some parents, they think it is a relief for them. Do you think the parents really know what the children are doing in Nairobi? They don't know. They don't know. They don't. As far as I understand, they don't know. They don't know. What do you think they think the children are they doing? They think our children are supported. They will come back one day with some money. I wish they knew what was happening with their children in Nairobi. Florence introduces me to a family who gave their disabled child up to traffickers. Kurwa was nine years old when she was taken in 2017. She hasn't been seen since. Kulo. Ah, <laughs> To ensure she's never found, the trafficker even changed the child's identity. Against all the odds, Kura's family still hopes to find her again. 
hata akienda wapi ni mjua alama yake hapa kwenye bega tu yani aliwekwa gharama kama kama kanakuja kwa mkono hii for kurwa's mother the pain of not knowing whether her daughter is alive or dead has taken a terrible toll mama unaweza taka tena rudi Kurwa isn't the first disabled child to be taken from this village. Pia kama kuna watoto wengine wameenda Nairobi wale wale mavu eh maswa ukiuliza anasema tu maswa maswa There are clearly many more victims of this vicious trade out there. Many more families ripped apart like Kuras. I head back to Nairobi determined to track down the men who trick families into parting with their kids all for the sake of profit. Gikomba Market in the heart of Nairobi has become a major center for disabled beggars. I want to find out if they too are connected to the Tanzanian trafficking network. Sasa, unaitwa nani? Unaishi wapi? The boy makes eye contact with his minder and within seconds he's taken away. Oh my gosh. There seem to be hundreds of beggars in this market, all operating in plain sight of the police. At six o'clock, the market begins to shut down. Suddenly, minders appear everywhere, taking the disabled kids to awaiting buses. The bus stop near Gikomba becomes a focal point for the beggars as they prepare to go back home. As you can see, that is three, that is four. There's a young lady next to me. Some being assisted and some are on their own. Totoko. There are signs all around me of a flourishing human trafficking network. The beggars and their minders all seem to be heading to one place, Karyobangi. The very same neighborhood where Farah, the boy we met on the streets and followed home, is kept by his own trafficker, Zengo. Situated just 10 kilometers northeast of the market, Karyobangi is a notorious area where crime is rampant. It is the perfect place to hide victims of human trafficking. 
Early one morning, our team stakes out the area. We've been tipped off that these handicapped children come from this area. We want to find out for ourselves if indeed this is true. It's 5.50 a.m. and already disabled kids are emerging from the shadows with their minders. So I think the bike is told to come when they're ready. Two, three, four, all on wheelchairs. Oh my goodness, this is another one. Those are seven wheelchairs. So far, we've counted more than 10 that have come out of this building. I've only been watching the area for around 15 minutes, and I've already observed dozens of kids being sent off to beg. There is another child that has been wheeled out. Even the one that is on the bike right now has crutches. I'm afraid I've lost count. They came so many of them. I don't know how many I've counted now. There could be hundreds of trafficked children held in this one area alone. I want to find out how the Karyobangi traffickers are getting away with it and how their business works. So I recruit a second investigator to approach Zengo. She will tell him she wants to buy her own set of disabled beggars. Zengo quickly takes the bait and agrees to introduce her to his colleague, Kamo, who he says regularly smuggles disabled kids from Tanzania. A few days later, my investigator meets up with Kamwa outside a nightclub. Accompanied by Zengo, he seems willing to help. But once inside, it's clear Kamwa is suspicious. But after a while, he offers to take my investigator into the heart of his operation. He even says he's willing to find disabled kids in Tanzania for my investigator. Kamwa talks about trafficking humans as if he was selling second-hand cars, and he'll do whatever it takes to keep the supply chain moving. 
Kamu says overall it costs just 10,000 Kenya shillings or 85 US dollars to bring a disabled beggar from Tanzania. Once in Nairobi, the beggar will earn at least 2,000 Kenya shillings or 18 US dollars a day. After just one week, the trafficker makes their investment back. Then it's pure profit, sometimes for years. Several weeks later, Kamwa is in Tanzania bringing in more disabled people for his operation. He offers my investigator a chance to get involved. Kamwa plans to keep some of the beggars for himself and pass on the rest. My investigator does not want to encourage him. So she says she's out of money and can't pay. Do you have any idea akona nyumba ni kama ngapi? Kwa nyumba nazo ako nazo mali anaisha kwa nyumba tatu yake yenye anaishi na na mbili za wafanyikazi wake. To keep track of his expanding business, Kamwa gets his minders to record every transaction in a notebook. As well as his base in Kariobangi, Kamwa has a property in Mwea two hours drive northeast of Nairobi. He says similar houses full of trafficked kids exist all around the country. He's brought my investigator here to show off the new kids he's just brought over from Tanzania. Kamwa tells her that the children are nervous. He needs to convince them they are in a safe place, but it's all a con. <laughs> Kamwa maintains a low profile when visiting his trafficking houses to keep one step ahead of the law. He takes my investigator to a nearby apartment where he's keeping the disabled children he has just trafficked from Tanzania the same ones he tried to sell to us.
Kamwa already has a minder in place, keeping watch over his merchandise. Richard. I'm struggling to leave these young, vulnerable children at the mercy of Kamwa and his trafficking network. Meanwhile, I receive a call from my investigator in Karyobangi with deeply worrying news. Farah has revealed the true extent of the abuse he's been suffering at Zengo's hands. Zengo has already taken Farah away from his family, deprived him of liberty and the money he's earned on the streets begging. But it seems that's not enough. He's also beating him on a regular basis. Knowing that Farah is in immediate danger, we alert the Nairobi police. Following my tip-off, the police begin their own investigation before organizing a major clampdown on the Kariobangi traffickers. The first target on their list is Kamwa, who brought over four disabled kids from Tanzania just weeks ago. Kamwa is quickly detained. Undeterred, the officers decide to search the building. Despite Kamwa's protests, police suspect he controls two other rooms. Oh my God. A young child and five people held in a windowless room. Check here. Sergeant, I check here. 
Police get the minders to remove two more disabled beggars from another room. I think it's the time we are earning his Ah, it's your next bit. That is what we are looking for. In the next bit. Good. They find Kamwa's notebook detailing all the money that has been collected from his beggars. I am so shocked at how many people are staying in that house. Really shocked. So we are going now to Zengo's house. I hope Farah will finally be rescued from the man who has kept him captive for almost a decade. Zengo, Zengo. 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 Zengo is completely refusing to come out. He denies he doesn't know anything as well. And the police are trying to force him out of the house. <laughs> Zengo's partner was also taken in for questioning. Come here, found the Kenyan police can arrest people just investigating something at this time, 11 p.m. What are you doing? I'm someone with my own. I'm going to come and inside. I don't come and inside. With Zengo and his partner safely in the police van, we can finally break into the locked rooms. Inside, we find Farah. It's not sitting properly. It was out. How does it operate? For our police, yeah? I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. So I'm going to go to the house. 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 Easy. He? Na he? Na he? Mata kupeleka maali mzuri? Mata kuangalia vizuri? Na hauta enda tena kwa street? Kuomba. Sawa? Hei. Hei, hauta enda tena. Tonight, we have caught up with two traffickers who the police have arrested. We've also managed to get Farah out of trouble, and hopefully he'll be taken to a facility that will take good care of him. I've tried to assure him that he's going to be well, that he will never have to go to the streets again. And that is my hope and prayer for him. Farah is finally free from his trafficker. But there's one more thing I really need to do. I've returned to Tanzania, hoping I can track down Farah's family. But everywhere we go, we seem to hit a dead end. Eh, I'm going to go to Malema. 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 I'm going to go to
According to him, the face is not familiar at all. Finally, a breakthrough. It turns out Farah's parents have since left the area. But he still has relatives living locally. Mama yake, Farah na nina huyu ni ndugu, mtu na dada yake. Kabisa tumbo moja. Ndugu zake wa karibu wengine ni yupi ndio huyu mjomba. Eventually, Farah's brother arrives. Ulimona mwisho lini? Siku hiyo ya kumuona ni ni zamani. Yaani siku mdata mlaka it appears Farah was trafficked at just 14 years old. He has spent almost half his life in captivity. Alienda Kenya na nani? Si, si pagidai. Na alikuenda Kenya na dua alienda kufanya nini? Kwa kutembezo na fale kwa kali kwa mchukua kumba omba. Nani ali 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 uliza mama ke ama alienda alienda kwanja gani? Alienda kwa mama yako. Nasa pata jikanza kwa uliza sasa ni ni. Mwe mtoto mwenye kwa kwa kanda na kuni ambia na mimi. Nenda kwa kinyi mera ni mera hivyo. Na takuji ni huu mwa kwa akulipot kwamba nenda kwa tongoji na kwa mtendaji. Mienda kwa hivyo zote. Walikuwa na wanatarajia nini alipoenda? Yeye aliwambia kwamba atawajengea nyumba, ataununia ngombe pamoja na jembe lake. Nilivyosikia hivyo. Na hela nitakuwa nawaletea na waletea. Nikanyamaza na mimi kimya tu. Nilishuma nikauliza tena mmeletewa hamna. But one relative knew exactly who had taken Farah. And it was Zengo Nestor. Zengo Nestor. Mm -hmm. Na me rudi apa tena. Sija wai kumwona sasa. Na miaka mingi mirefu kasi ya mwona huyo. Na wazazi wameshai kuongea na Farah? Hata kimoja hawaja wai kuongea na Farah. Tangu fara ondoke apa wamesha wai kuasiliana vivyote na wazazi wengi? Amna. Nampaka wamehama kabisa hawaja wai kuongea na fara. Walihama? Mbona walihama? Na eneo lao ndoa ni ndoa maana wakahama huko. Mm. Maana hapa walikuwa wanaishi kwa kwa eneo dogo tu la hekali moja. Mm. E. It's clear that a hope for a better future drove Farah's family to let Zengo take him. But when the money and gifts he promised them failed to materialize, the family were forced to move even farther away. After his rescue by the police, Farah is now living in a care home, free from his traffickers, and receiving the support he so desperately needs. While he's yet to go home, I have a surprise for him. I've managed to track down Farah's mom and arrange a video call. No. Buku itakuwa usumbuku. Eh, nitafuta sehemu hiyo ya Polini. 
Iye u jasa za nyumbani. Now, it's been a long time, but they haven't seen or spoken to each other since 2014. Mother wants her son home, and son wants to go back home. This is just the beginning. Zengo and Kamwa were charged with human trafficking and are both currently in police custody. They deny the charges against them. Farah has given his testimony as a key witness in Zengo's trial. The children seen rescued during the police operation were all repatriated to Tanzania. Our investigation may have disabled Zengo and Kama's network, but this is just a drop in the ocean. Across Kenya, young children, youngsters, and even adults are being subjected to the same horrors. Trafficked from across the border, they are deprived of their freedom, starved and even beaten by ruthless criminals who take away every penny that they get. The authorities in our country must investigate and crack down on those who profit from this suffering. And ordinary citizens must also stop turning a blind eye to the exploitation that we walk past every day. <laughs>